time to cook an egg banjo. And in case you're wondering what an egg banjo is, all will be revealed. Let's get the fire going first. Who are you? I'm the bushcraft police. What do you want? You're about to light that birch bark with a cigarette lighter. I'm about to light some birch bark with a cigarette lighter. Why? That's not bushcraft. But you need to calm down, bushcraft police. Don't tell me to calm down. I said that's not bushcraft. Take that bushcraft police. So, kettle's almost boiled and then we'll get the cast iron pan on and start frying our egg to make the egg banjo. So, what are some of the utensils we're using to make our tea with? So you've seen some previous videos, birch burr cook so carved by my buddy Paul Adamson. And we've got this spoon carved by my, my buddy Cyril Samani, who hails out of France, a very talented craftsman, all round craftsman. Very kindly gifted this to me last year at an event and uh, Unless I'm mistaken, it's made from Spalty Beach and the head, the finial he's carved. Um, and it's like those statues in the Pacific Islands. That's what he's kind of modelled it on. But it's a really funky spoon. And the pouch to hold my tea bags in, because every man needs a pouch to hold his tea bags in, is made from kangaroo tail fur, made by my buddy Al Ainsworth, aka Howling Dingo, based out of Australia. And yet this is made from kangaroo tail fur and calf hide. So there you go. 
fancy schmancy uh, tea bag holder. And last but not least, my sugar caddy, every man needs a sugar caddy, is made by a lady called Jasmine who's hails out of Wisconsin. Proper multinational tea this is. So she's made this from birch bark, harvested from Wisconsin. The lid as well, carved out of birch. Um, and it's an incredible amount of skill that's gone into this. And it's so tightly woven, you put sugar in it, nothing comes out, nothing at all, you know. So there you go, man, a fancy little sugar caddy. So the cast iron pan, heating up, and then obviously I put a bit of olive oil spray on there. Man, I love that olive oil spray. That's a godsend, that stuff. So I've got the eggs in one of these carry cases. And yes, before anyone comments, it looks like a pair of... <clears throat> and then we've got the bread. And you're probably wondering what on earth are you storing the bread in? So here's the thing, right? This is whole thing at the moment, environmental kind of uh, issues around obviously plastic, right? So I'm really trying to minimize where I can a lot of waste and I find myself I mean I reuse really bags um, but I find the bags are not great you know they're a little bit flimsy so I've done a search online and I found these bags on Amazon they weren't that expensive it was a pack of four different colors this was a red one there was a, like a, a, a see-through one I think it was blue and another color green or something um, and these are really strong silicon bags with a heavy duty seal on top and these are designed to hold hot foods cold foods anything you want really and they're food safe silicon and these are fantastic, so I put the bread in here. It prevents the bread from getting destroyed as well, right? Um, and these are fantastic, these are really good. They weren't that expensive. I think I paid roughly about £10 for a pack of four. Um, and these are really solid, you know. Um, I'm quite liking these, so hopefully this will kind of contribute and obviously you know, try to minimise waste, right? You know, aluminium foil or aluminium foil if you're in North America. Uh, plastic bags etc and trying to kind of minimize all of that stuff and trying to use stuff that's obviously reusable and more environmentally friendly right friends time for the sizzle whistle i forgot to mention using this uh, birch uh, cooking spoon from our buddy lee stoffer let's go for this oh 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 we've got a sizzle whistle Those eggs are being done super fast. So I've got a bit of butter. And it's now Jean. Just use the tip of the serving spoon. Oh, there's, a, there's a butter knife. There you go. Look at that. Let's use this stuff here. You know, for ages I've been pronouncing it now Jean. I have to keep reminding myself it's, in, it's now Jean, it's an American pronunciation. Being an American company. These things are great. Love these. I've got so many of these now Jean little containers. Useful for all sorts of stuff. Including one of the survival food items. Tesco's butter. Right, so that's it. That's that done. So now, time to get the eggs on there. Okay, so let's try and get this egg on here in one piece. Can't believe how quick this Dutch oven, this, uh, this cast iron is cooked. The, the eggs, it's cooked into perfection. So, last but not least, let's get the tea on. And proper milk, the Z breast milk. A lot of inquiries about this, so I might start supplying it. Just got to find a way of heal my sore nipples. You know, squeezing them is pretty tough, you know. So anyway, time to get tea on.
Friends, the time has come. Firstly, let's have a sip on our cup of tea. So I always like to give a bit of a salute for those of you who for whatever reason are not able to get out due to health, financial, work, family, etc. So here's to you. Cheers. so good that is so good and i really mean that as well another sip <laughs> this is that good oh man tea out of a cookser my friends gotta get yourself a cookser if you used to be a proper bushcrafter you gotta get yourself a cookser or a cooksy gossa whatever term you want to use right so finally here we go man the egg banjo now I did mention why it's called an egg banjo. It's essentially just a fried egg sandwich. And before I say that, in case anyone flips out why I haven't got any salt and pepper, it's because I just want to eat it. It's a really good quality egg, this. So I want to savour the taste. Otherwise I will put salt and pepper in normally. So the question, why is it called an egg banjo? So story time. So a while ago I did a wild camp. Some of you may have seen, this is very early on in my channel, uh, going back a few years with Armoured uh, Roach, uh, a cockroach. He uh, is a career British Army guy, spent his entire life in the British military, uh, retired. And I spent, I was lucky to spend a day with him. You know, he's a really nice guy, showed me a lot of hospitality and he was cooking up some breakfast and he goes, all right, Zed, I want to cook up some egg banjos. And at the time I thought, what the hell is an egg banjo, right? I thought, okay, I didn't really question it at the time. So he pursued to cook a fried egg sandwich. Edit, delicious, everything was fantastic. Edited the video, put it out. Now there's a lot of former and actually current serving British Army guys that watch these videos. And they realized I didn't know what an egg banjo was when Roach said that to me. And he goes, Ed, you don't know what that is, do you? I went, no, what is it? So it's army talk, right? And what it is, is when they're out in the field, they'll cook a fried egg sandwich and I'll demonstrate that They'll go to eat it. Now, obviously, I'm not an army guy, right? But I assume in the army, you've got to keep your kit looking clean and everything looking great, right? And so they'll eat the fried egg sandwich. And as, apologies for talking with my mouth full. And as they bite into the yolk, the yolk will start dripping onto their army uniform and so they'll be eating with one hand and they'll be cleaning off trying to prevent the yolk from falling onto the uniform hence the egg banjo there you go make complete sense when they explained it to me so there you go man the mystery the egg banjo british army talk and for those of you can maybe kind of like chime in in the comments down below to let me know your experiences with that. Because like I said, there's a lot of you guys who are former British Army and even serving British Army who have, or who have family serving in the British Army. So there you go, my friends, the mystery of the egg banjo, AKA the egg fried sandwich. 